test, test, test. All right, going to see if this is working. Yeah. Looks like we're running all right. Not showing up on the YouTubes. All right, let's see if this is going to work now. Are we there? We go. All right. Don't know what that was about, but it didn't want to work. So hello, I'm Mac the Maker, and uh, let's do some unboxing today of the new box set here. Uh, I actually ordered this after it was released from Catalyst uh, Game Labs, so I think they still have some available. But uh, go ahead and get it popped open here. There she is. And that glare is gonna. Which light is that here? Oh, good. That's the room light. Let's try that. All right, that's a little better, at least for this part here. So, true story about this box art, that is not supposed to be a catapult it's stepping on. won't say what it's supposed to be, but it's not actually a catapult. It was changed for uh, certain legal reasons. Put this open here. So this is what my fifth box set, I think. My first one was third edition back in 92, 93, something like that. The wonderfully crappy on-scene miniatures. The, the designs weren't crappy, but the plastic was. Very snug fit here. Catalyst always has really nice boxes. Well, there's a little uh, William H. Keith Ice Storm Colby Commandos. Must be a new unit. Oh no. Durant Carlisle. Huh. Alright, it's a Grey Death Legion, maybe? Hmm. That's cute. I'll throw that somewhere. Got the Alpha Strike cards. Pop those open here in a minute. More D6, just what I needed. What everybody's looking for the miniatures. I'm going to set those aside for a minute and get a better look. Very nicely packaged. kind of cool. So it looks like you also get some of the old uh, card cutouts like they did in second edition and the reinforcements and all that stuff um, as well as some extra terrain features. That's really cool. Kind of like the old hex map sets. So you can change up your maps a little bit from time to time. Oh and they're 
reversible, so you got desert and grasslands. That's a really cool feature. Uh, I'm just being told here that videos needs to be flipped, but I don't know that I can do that from here. Uh, Watch I crash everything. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's something I can do from here or I know how to do. Okay. So here are the maps. I'll cover those in a little bit. I actually talked to the person that designed them. Oh, these are really cool. You can never have enough of these at a game. Um, the quick reference cards, with all your modifiers and uh, everything like that on there. I don't know if you can see the leg on this is screwing me up too. So, and then your record sheet book for the eight mechs in here, as well as uh, your blank one. True story, when I first started playing, I was given the Locust from the 3rd edition box set, and I had no idea how any of this worked, so I was like, well, if some dots are good, more dots are better, and I filled in the entire, that time it was the Lizard Crusader symbol for the mech, I filled it in with dots everywhere possible, thinking, well, why, why don't they just do that in the first place? No clue. No clue. Very cool Battletech Primer. Oh, Jesus. Uh, looks like all the... Try to remember to flip it around for you guys. Um, all the book titles that they've got out with all the new art. You can see they got the new Locust and Shadowhawk on here. All very cool stuff. It's awesome they're getting the fiction back on. I know it's been a huge issue for a long, long time. FASA wasn't the best with paying off debts. So this is kind of like the Universe at War, I think it was on the website. Um, different eras. Cool little simplified map. I do miss that from the old box set was that giant 3067 map. And just some real quick history. Really digging the uh, art layout options here. You know, with the um, Stalker from 3026, the Zeus X, some cool samurai, all the old Stalker art from uh, the original City Tech. A lot of call outs to the old classics as well as new art. It's a really good idea. It's more on. Um, the Evil Evil Cappies and House Merrick. I think that's from the old, God, is that, is that Mech Warrior? Original Mech Warrior or the original Mercenaries Handbook? The old Neural Helmet ripping the guy out. Well, that might be newer art. I might be thinking of something else. Mercenaries. And we got a picture of uh, the original. Katrina Steiner, uh, Shadowhawk from Reinforcement there on the top. Oh, very cool. Ah, okay. The Grayson's Father's Unit. That makes sense. So that's like a 3023 book then, this Ice Storm. Thanks for that. Oh, man, this is... Uh, now I get why they always complain about the chat being hard to read during other live chats. It is a pain. There we go. Mercenaries. Cool little uh, Battletech and Mech Warrior rundown. And then uh, call out to like the Battletech Manual and Total Warfare. I have to say, I'm not a fan of the redone art for Total Warfare. That... Atlas was pretty cool on the original Battletech rules, but I don't know. 
all the other amazing art we've got, and they do that one. Though it is the fat list from uh, the old plastic sets, if you've ever seen one of those, the short fat dude. I think I have one laying around. And, uh, flip on the back. Yeah, it was all uh, the novel listings. So I don't know to say they're print on demand. Oh, it's all EPUBs. Okay. You can download that from your book supplier of choice, which is probably Amazon for everybody. And the rule book. This is way nicer than the rule books they've done before in these books. Real glossy, thick cardstock cover, all glossy pages. Really nice. I'm going to try to do this upside down, right? I'll go page through page. But uh, Now, I was told by some of the people that worked on the layout and design that uh, this book pulls right from the... Um, uh, new Battletech manual. So it's got that gator, which is the way to figure out your gunnery modification, you know, gunnery, uh, attack, all that stuff. Uh, let's see, credits. Yep, there you are. Third one down. So, let's see, who else is. Oh, there's Mary. So. Yeah, I guess a little bit about myself, if you don't know, I'm obviously Mac the Maker, but uh, for a long time I, I was a demo agent for Catalyst uh, doing Battletech. I only stopped simply because I really didn't have time anymore, um, and I started the, the Mac the Maker business. Uh, I was also, well, I also am a forum mod, but I don't get there very often uh, anymore. Um, yeah, here's the Gator thing. So when you're trying to figure out your... Um, attack modifiers when you're shooting someone, the, the gunnery attack modifier, target movement modifier, any other modifiers, you know, your trees, uh, terrain, other things, range modifier. And that's the, your real nice, uh, like, elementary school math trick to remember how to do it. Uh, I think that was uh, Orange Woman's uh, contribution there. Having a teacher in charge of things sometimes is, is beneficial. Um, and your standard hex art that we've been. Uh, cluster. Yeah, this is this is a really nice little rule book. Like I said, I don't know. No, didn't they used to come with the um, oh I guess it was the quick start rules, wasn't it? it wasn't it wasn't the predecessor to Alpha Strike. It was just the quick start rules. So, oh, this is all in some really nice, let's see if I can get that out, art from Camo Specs guys having painted um, the miniatures. I'm pretty sure I printed some of those for uh, them. Probably between uh, Matt and I. So anyway, so yeah, Forum Mod, Great Sir Chaosmo, and uh, was it two years ago, uh, between working with uh, Stinger over there, uh, who does a lot of the designing and uh, did some of the printing uh, for the new classics, um, I had gotten a Form 2 printer, and they needed some more miniatures run for Gen Con 2017, so they reached out to me, and I think I had about a week and a half, two weeks, to do like 60 miniatures. Um, it was a long week. So, all right, so let's look at the maps here. i got my little notepad here. So, on Instagram, I follow Cat Wilder, uh, at K-A-T-W-Y-L-D-E-R, who was the artist that did the maps. So, I reached out and asked if they had anything that they wanted to kind of... Uh, talk about the maps or, you know, uh, thought process behind it, challenges and stuff like that. Um, this one's my favorite, the, um, what are they, the, the limestone cliffs. Um, this is based apparently on a, a real world picture uh, that uh, cats had come across and uh, it actually solved a, a bunch of issues as well. Because a lot of times with the old FASA maps especially, it's really kind of hard to tell levels, uh, light trees, wood, woods, whatever. Um, so here on this map, 
Let's see if we can fold it up so we can get a little bit closer. The uh, limestone outcropping really helps kind of uh, visually uh, determine the, the height requirements. So you can tell there's the limestone there, so that's a that's an increase in height, and you can tell the layer. Um, I'm thinking back to that insane city map that's all the buildings and you can't tell what's going on at all. I hate that map. I can't believe that one ever got put out. So, all right, so we had the, the limestone bluffs out here, um, kind of your, your center section, kill zone, and then the, the cliffs on the side. Uh, what do we got? What's the highest it goes to? Level two. So it looks like level two. And then uh, on the back, it's all kind of a rocky bluff. Does this have the uh, Desert 3 is what they call this map. Um, I wish my camera mount would go higher, but I guess I don't really do this a lot. So uh, same idea, just no center kill zone. The standard uh, kind of thick bond paper that they've been using for maps forever. Much clearer though than the old maps. Here we go. And the uh, custom or custom uh, modern take on the original uh, BattleTech map. You've got the little lake off to the side instead of the middle, um, but it's immediately recognizable as a, a descendant of that uh, initial map set that everybody's probably played a dozen games on or more. And this this is kind of cool though. I'm hoping it's a lead-in for a, a second map set. You've got this nice road feature going on that doesn't stop. So is that a bridge maybe? Yeah, it is a bridge. Um, some rough on this one, rough terrain, level three. So this is definitely an advanced map, uh, depth one. Um, that's really cool. So I'm hoping this this map leads into something with the road going. Somewhere. Uh, all right. So let's get that out and let us go to the meat and potatoes. And I'll drop everything. All right. So here we go. Let's uh, maybe move this down. So we can kind of get everything in now that we've got the box set. So, right, so let's start from the top left. So we've got the Shadowhawk, Catapult, New Commando, Locust, which must be one of my favorite uh, redesigns, Thunderbolt, my favorite back, Wolverine, Awesome, and Battlemaster. Now I know for the same price you used to get like 65 max or whatever it was and I mean on that last box set where the minis were actually really nicely done it was a hell of a deal but I totally understand why that doesn't happen anymore um, and still for two lances of max for 50 bucks you mean you have a full game going on or 60 bucks whatever I paid for that thing um, that's still a really good deal so um, Battlemaster you know, I, I guess the plastic's a little bit soft. I guess I'm not one of those people that care enough about that. The details look crisp. It's, uh, it looks like it's focusing okay. Yeah, that's focusing okay. Um, I took to sanding. Well, that's good. Um, I remember like those third edition minis, man. They just turned to gum. Those things were junk. Um, the mold line's not too bad, but then again, these are probably pretty fresh molds, so I wouldn't expect uh, too many mold lines. Um, I guess they are assembled. I'm thinking they use that polyurethane glue, uh, expanding like Gorilla Glue to separate these. Like when you go to strip it, it turns into that uh, gummy nastiness. I don't know. Um, 400 grit went well. Flip over. Oh. Yeah, so the one thing with 3D printing is somewhere you got to put the supports, especially with the uh, liquid resin, SLA or DLP. So um, 
you're always going to lose some some details somewhere, and that's usually the back for these. Um, but that looks that looks really good. Um, go back to, like I said, my favorite mech here, the old Thunderbolt. True story. The last game I played for 17 years in 1994, uh, I was piloting a 5SS Thunderbolt, the 3025 Steiner with the PPC, and I. Uh, headshotted a dashy and killed the pilot and uh, this was at the after school battle tech club in middle school that I ran with another kid named JJ and uh, he got really pissed off um, by it so the next game he made a whole set of mechs and vehicles and aerospace fighters and dropships and called them all leviathans and this is years before the the ghost bear leviathan dropship you know tar comps jumping you know as much clan cheesiness as you possibly can and uh, i ran my my rookie squad mercenaries with all the new players and, and mostly 3025 tech and uh you know he came down and just annihilated us with with his, his munchiness and uh, it almost came down to fisticuffs. I grabbed him, he grabbed me. I, there may have been a mother insult in there. I don't know. But I didn't play for 17 years after that. Uh, maybe even more. It was, what, 20, 2011 was the next time I played uh, with the Chicago crew. So awesome it is very nice. I'm not, I'm not going to speak to that level. I'm not going to make that pun. Yeah, it's awesome. I do like the full-size tech bases, too, rather than the like weird truncated ones that were on the other ones. I got why those were there, so you could see the underlying terrain. Um, but yeah, nobody liked those. Everybody cut those off. Um, I do like that they're, the hex bases are separate too on these. Nope, trying to read the chat here. Uh, oh, flip the base away from me. Ha! Got it, yeah. For somebody who does like 3D modeling and model building and all that, my uh, kind of spatial awareness is junk. So there we go. Awesome. So a little catapult, which is by far the best catapult that has ever been uh, in a box set. Even got the details on the doors. I actually recommended not doing the doors because I wasn't sure uh, how they'd come out in, in molding and in injection molding, but these are, I mean, I'm not going to wrench on it because it'll break it, but they are, they are sturdy. They're not going anywhere. Really good detail on the back. Really crisp. So I don't know, you know, the soft plastic criticisms. I'm not really sure what's up with that, but... Shadowhawk out. He might need a, a visit to the dock here. He's got a little droopy barrel syndrome going on here. Um, not too bad. A little heat gun or some boiling water. Probably boiling water. My luck with the heat gun, I'd melt the crap out of it. So, some of these now in the next part here. I had a whole bunch of minis to compare to, and I even have an unseen griffin. So, uh, we'll compare it to that. So the Wolverine, my favorite medium. Um, this thing looks so good in red. Um, look in the, the cover of the, uh, is it the Merck's Handbook? No, that's the, the Warhammer. Whichever book has this guy in red, it's just so good looking in red. Um, I forgot that this box set doesn't have the griffin you've got to get the starter box that's right i forgot about that um yeah i'll have to dig that i'm sure those will be on ebay sooner or later i totally forgot that because the only on scene that i have is the griffin one uh, locust did a real good job making this guy look badass you know, the, the details on the machine gun jackets, I mean, those didn't print very well um, just because of the, the small size. But, uh, hold on. So, probably turn that bro 
of the window also the, to change. Even the antenna, I mean that's that went through shipping really well. So I don't know if you had a look. Oh, Commando. Here's the one I lost. Um, I was surprised by this one, to be honest, when uh, Ray sent me this. Uh, so just before Gen Con 2017, I had gotten um, the Shadowhawk, the Beamer, the Thunderbolt, the Awesome, the Wolverine. I am the one responsible for the, uh, what is it, the left-armed uh, Wolverines, and um, the Locusts, and the Griffins. And he sent me right, like, I think it was Friday of Gen Con, maybe Thursday of Gen Con. He sent me the file for the Catapult and uh, the Commando. And he wanted to know if I could bring them to Gen Con, um, in which, you know, Catalyst graciously provided me a badge of um, an individual from China or Japan um, to let me in to the booth to drop off my miniatures for them. Uh, but I was really surprised that the commando was one of them. Combat manual, Kirita. That's right. For the Wolverine. Um, but again, this is another one that just looks so good. Aesthetically, it's very uh, modern. You know, the old commando's fine. But this guy, I like his kind of tactical looking face mask going on the head. I don't know how well you can see that. Oh, that comes up pretty well. Okay. Um, so yeah, the... Uh, on the prints, I don't know if it was just the way the arm was or if there was an issue with the mesh, but every single commando I printed, boom, right at the arm. Don't know why. Always forgot about it. All right, so let us. So I have a handful of these that I printed from. Uh, catalyst. They were either uh, blemishes that I didn't want to send because they weren't perfect. Um, in one case, um, especially with the catapults, I was so short on time, it was actually easier just to hit print again on the print plate than like um, remove the extra catapult that I needed um, to, um, you know, print and get everything done in time. So I'll go ahead and compare. Which other one do I have? Um, okay. So yeah, I have two Griffins. I have the, the Re-Scene and the On-Scene, and I don't even have the new Classic Griffin. So um, so let's go ahead and do the Awesome first, since I have that in 3D print and the old box set. So, Awesome. Um, oops. Actually grab the Awesome. Identical size. Oh, oh yeah, these come in pretty well. Um, looks like the arm's a little bulkier here, a little more oblong, a little oval compared to the the round that it should be, but that's okay. And you're gonna have some issues, some differences in, in plastic. Um, yeah, all the all the details are are there, and in some cases way crisper than the the 3D prints. By no means is the 3D print unrecognizable, but um, you definitely get some benefits from injection molding. And here's, you can see kind of the, the difference in the backs there. So for the 3D print, you got to have some supports, right? Everywhere, um, everywhere has to be attached to something else. You can't just have uh, cured resin floating in space, right? So you got to have supports and lattice work that build onto each other, and those have to go somewhere. And that's kind of um, you can see it's just kind of soft and bumpy and weird. Um, the white stuff is dissolved resin. Um, after they get printed, they go in an alcohol bath to help wash the dissolved resin away. Um, I was in such a hurry, and this might be why I kept this guy. Um, it was just because he had so much of the white film, um, and I didn't have time to, to run him through another, uh, another bath uh, to get that all off. So as it air dried, you know, the dissolved resin and the alcohol kind of redistributed back on itself. So, but yeah, size wise, they are close enough to be identical. And then we're going to compare that to, I think, 
this is two box sets that go awesome. Well, this might be the most recent one. I'm not sure. Um, you know, it's got the, the skinny little battle fist arm. The gun's a little oblong. Uh, but size-wise, don't talk to me or my son ever again. So, some thickness, too. I mean, try to get the feet at least level, but eh, that looks about right. You know, so you're, well, that's why I brought a micrometer. So since we said these were about the same size, well, let's do it with the hex. So with the hex to the top of the, I don't know if the dish or the arm baffle is, I'll just do the dish kind of. 53.6. And this guy with the base. And his dish, satellite dish, is definitely. And you're 50.4 ish, so a good solid three millimeters uh, shorter. And again, thicker. Um, did I? You know what? Let me go grab the metal first. Here's one of my metal Draconis combine sort of light ones. So a little better, a little closer. I'd say height wise they're pretty close. I guess I didn't realize how much that plastic. Oh yeah. That one totally shrunk. So so compared to the metal, I mean it's beefier, it's definitely beefier. It's that uh endo steel zero fibrous armor there, bulking it up there. Um and it's totally recognizable as an atlas or uh, awesome, but you know, you, you gotta do it. You gotta freshen up the game, man. Those designs are almost as old as I am. And as much as I love them, if Battletech doesn't get some new uh, younger blood in them. Uh, it's going to be a problem. I mean, I'd have to say at the, all the cons I go to, playing, running, you know, the players I interact with, the average age has got to be getting close to 40. Um, so which are the ones that I have here? Okay, so Thunderbolt and Thunderbolt. Pose is a little bit different. I think uh, the plastic one has arm pegs. Um, it was separated for uh, production. These probably all were. Um, where all I got were uh, single piece files. So, uh, but otherwise, again, the gun barrel looks a little beefier. Uh, maybe the darkness of the plastic. But, uh, but again, close enough to the the same size to not write home about. And so they didn't. Uh, I know I, I recommended changing some of the sizes based on uh, Stinger's feedback and and my own just. Kind of seeing them, but of course I don't remember what ones. I think the catapult was one um, that I recommended changing. So awesome, or thunderbolt, thunderbolt, and then catapult. So moment of truth. Ah, they did. Well, oh yeah, totally. It's definitely thin. Oh, is it? The cockpit area definitely looks smaller, but that may simply because it be because it's more defined. And again, the darker plastic doesn't hurt either. Let's take a look here. Uh, foot to missile door. Is somewhere in the 48s, and this is nice because the foot's hanging off the top, so I can just yeah, they're the same size, unless the scaling got skewed a little bit in the Y or something. Um, but so what is this? A 60 tonner? Let's see, what do I have for 60 tons? Uh, besides the Thunderbolt, 
and 65. Eh, I buy it. I buy that they're in the same same general ballpark. You know, if you were telling me it was a 50 tonner, I probably wouldn't buy it. But of course, I hated all the catapult sculpts, so I don't have any of them that I could find. So I cannot compare the catapult, this catapult, to any of the. Well, I lie. I have a fatapult somewhere, but I won't uh, embarrass myself by pulling that one out. Uh, Wolverine. This is one of my favorite of the. Oh no, my antenna broke off. Ah, one of my favorite of the recenes is the the Wolverine. It's not over here. Is it? Shoot. It's gonna be an Iron Man medals order. Um. And where did I put that guy here? Sorry, helps if I get him on camera. So obviously a chunky boy uh, compared to the the Phoenix uh, mech, but uh, that's okay. He always was. Was it the Blockfoot from Dungrum? Is that what his name was? Or was that the Thunderbolt? I can never remember. Um, yeah, I mean height wise. They're fairly close, but even you know missile launcher, everything is just you know 20 pounds heavier. And you've got the you know, linebacker on the left here to the to the running back version. Uh, it's all right, but I, I definitely prefer the the new one to the the Project Phoenix one. I wish I wish I had an on scene. Wolverine, but I don't. I think I sold it a few years ago when I was still a demo agent and going, I'll never be able to use these. And I needed money. Uh, Battlemaster. These ones are in the same pose. Same height and everything again. Dimensions are the same. So these guys are not sure if you guys heard any of that, but my daughter's ready for bed. Um, yeah, again, I'm really blown away about the, the details on these guys. I read when the, the Gen Con boxes that got sent out and, and some people picked them up and commented on the, the soft plastic or the soft details. I'm not seeing it. Are they as crisp maybe as the, the new Primaris Marines from GW? No, but uh, they're definitely way better than like the old Imperial Guard models from GW. It helps to have your own plastic production company. Blockhead, that's it, thank you. Um, and then we'll compare to some of the other ones. So the Wolverine, or Wolverine, Warhammer, 70 tonner. And we'll compare that to would my thunderbolt go? Jeez. This is why I was a horrible mechanic. I would put things down and can never remember. So five ton difference. Pretty similar. So the the, the recenes are definitely or recenes classics are definitely scaled well to each other. Um, it seems like compared to the battle master, which is always a a tall boy. So, again, foot to foot, and my super calibrated finger. Everybody else's favorite. We can never have too many of them. Marauder. This one broke, and I super glued the leg, but it. No, is this a super? I don't remember what one, what's the issue with this one. Um, I printed a few of them and there was an issue. I think this one, the foot kept, oh, the dispatch, the foot came, uh, kept breaking off because of how I orientated the model when I printed it. So rather than risk having the foot fall off at Gen Con or Origins, I just threw it in the bin. Um, compared to, and honestly, I don't, this one was a gift. This is, Old, 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 old Marauder with the side-by-side -side legs and no gun. Um, so when they say scale creep and all that, because I don't think this is the Mad 2, there's no wing mounts. Um, scale creep was... 
This thing is just ginormous compared to the, the classic. And it's probably actually lead, so it's a little bit poisoning me, but that's okay. Um, and I have to say, I was never a huge Marauder fan. Boy, I like the mech stat-wise, aesthetically, yeah. Um, but uh, this guy, this classic, this is this is it's a bad Mama Jumbo. I liked it so much, I made a 160th version, which I'll show here in a little bit. Uh, anything else you guys want to see? Measurements? Anything like that? Um, comparisons. Oh, I got the Shadow Hawk here, the Racing Shadow Hawk. Again, it's going to be another skinny boy versus the, the Grandma's boy. Didn't miss any meals. Again, I prefer the classic. The Phoenix ones aren't bad. I don't hate them like a lot of people do, but. Um, they really knocked it out of the park with these classics. And the, the new Phoenix Hawk that they showed on the uh, cover of the Warrior Trilogy that's getting re-released. I can't wait for that thing to drop. And that's, that's another nice looking uh, mech. And then, yeah, here's just for comparison, even though I don't have one, is the Racing Griffin versus the Wolverine. Line up, huh? All right. So let's see if I can get them all. Of course, working upside down is not helping me at all. Uh, uh, Commando. Trying to get them on the same line here. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's look at all these guys over here. Yeah, yeah, they're coming. Now the skewed isn't going to help here. Whoops. Let's zoom out here. All right, so let's... Oh, I need to move everything over. Probably get it out. Where is it? This is going to get tricky to get the feet kind of lined up. So let's do the top of the hex base to the line. That should get us fairly close. You know what? Close enough. Does that uh, get the archer anymore? 
Uh, I don't have... I did an Archer for CSO Gen Con, and um, that's another one like the Catapult where the doors are all molded open. And in plastic, I guess that's okay, but the 3D printing resin um, is very brittle. Prototyping resin is very brittle. Um, so it's very easy for it to break off, and I'm fairly certain one of the doors broke off on my way to Gen Con, or on its way to Gen Con when I think it was um, uh, Matt had it um, going to Gen Con and then leaving Gen Con, the other door broke off. Um, I think we are supposed to do some for Adepticon too, but uh, I got to double check my notes and see what the, the production order was for Adepticon. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I don't have the Archer right in front of me. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty close lineup with the, you know, the Warhammer and Marauder, which everybody knows the, the reasons they weren't in the newest box set, or at least I hope they do. Thank you, Harmony Gold. Um, and these were the ones that were first released, what was it, four years ago? Maybe five years ago, this Gen Con? I'm trying to remember. 2016 at least. It might have even been 2015. Um, so these, these have been floating around for a while. Um, so that's that. Let me just look at my notes. Um, now we talked about the maps a little bit. Uh, when they were doing the maps, uh, ease of gameplay was like, ease of gameplay and clarity was the number one priority um, for designing them, which is something I wholeheartedly agree with. Um, if you're going to use maps, which I'm kind of on the Alpha Strike bandwagon these days where I like the, the open terrain um, with no hexes. Um, but definitely in a convention environment, I totally understand why uh, hex maps are popular. It really limits the, the cheating ability. It's a lot easier to mentally count hexes in your head before you accuse your opponent of cheating than it is uh, just ripping out your tape measure and, and measuring in front of them in case you're not sure. Um, so yeah, let's do... Let's go back to my prime. I gotta set this up. So Adepticon. Did I? Nope. Sorry. Second monitor isn't working too great here. Uh, okay. So Adepticon. So if you don't know about Adepticon, let's turn that on. No? Man, OBS is buggy as hell. All right, so Adepticon is in Schomburg. It's the last week of March. Um, it is a Wednesday now. I think it starts Wednesday night um, through Sunday. It is all miniature wargaming. There's no card games, or at least organized card, card game play. There's no RPGs. There's no board games. Again, organized board play, board games. Um, all miniature wargaming. Every miniature wargame you can imagine. Um, historicals. Um, okay, yeah, so 2015 was the when the, the Warhammer and Marauder first showed up. So, yeah, wow. Um, if you can make it to Adepticon, you owe it to yourself. It's a fantastic time. Um Currently, at least last year, and I think this year, and probably continuously, if you want to just walk around Adepticon, you don't want to play any games or anything, you don't even have to buy a ticket. You can go into vendor hall, um, you can pretty much do anything but play games uh, without a badge. Um, so if you just want to buy stuff, I mean, Forge World comes out if you're a 40k player or a Age of Sigmar player. Um, GW Forge World has a massive presence there. Catalyst will be there this year, um, a first. Um, I think they're going to actually be in the hallway outside of the, the um, primary vendor area in one of the conference rooms. Um, if it is where I think it is, it's right by the Bits reseller guy, who is an incredibly popular attraction. So that's actually a really good place for Catalyst. Um, lots of foot traffic by there. Um, so I'm excited to actually have a presence there and uh, when people come to the, the demo tables and we're running stuff and ask where they can buy um, the box set will A, be able to tell them there is one now, and B, point them to the booth to to buy the product. Because um, it used to be the, the Bits guy would buy bring in some random Battletech stuff, and um, 
you know, he'd have what he'd have. And by bits guy, if you don't know, he's a guy that predominantly has, um, you know, broken down sprues and miniatures of Warhammer, a war machine, some Battletech stuff he's had, some other games. Um, and you can go buy stuff piecemeal. Um, and I spend a lot of money there, a lot of money. Um, so, yeah, that's Adepticon, uh, 51 days, Dale, no, no uh, pressure, 51 days, 12 hours, 9 minutes, and 27 seconds. I'm just going to keep screen capping this and sending it to you. Um, three, four days, whatever it is, of gaming. Um, it's right by O'Hare Airport at Chicago. All amazing Chicago food that I can't eat anymore. Um, I'm lucky. Um, some of the Battletech folks live literally down the road from Adepticon, so I just uh, hang out there. Um, you know, sleep there and then drive over to the, the convention center. Parking's a pain. It's a nightmare, but um, there's nothing you can do for it. Uber. I did my first Uber last uh, Adepticon. It was great until the guy almost killed us. Um, so yeah. So that's Adepticon. What we're doing is... Let's hope this works here. Um, so last year I did most of the terrain, and uh, it was okay. Um, part of the problem is, you know, I live in northern Illinois. Um, Adepticon's quote-unquote spring, um, but the months leading up to that can be very, very cold. So working on big terrain boards, gluing down foam, <clears throat> excuse me, all that sort of thing, uh, can be really hard to do. Um, so a lot of it ended up being last minute, not necessarily by choice, but by circumstance. Uh, I live in a fairly small house. You know, I can't uh, kick my wife out of a living room and just set up some saw horses and work on a 4x8 uh, table. Um, well, I could. Um, I wouldn't have to worry about my wife anymore, that's for sure. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, I did okay. You know, we 3D printed, um, you know, it was, it was hex maps, but uh, mech scale buildings. Um, which we had some people comment on because it would technically skew the ranges, but it looked really nice. I was really proud of it. Um, you know, we had the uh, New Avalon City. We had my big mech scale Union drop ship. Uh, we had a mech scale cargo ship. So um, for me, for being my first kind of showing, doing terrain and stuff, I'm okay with it. It could have been a lot better, but I'm okay with it. Um, then comes Hardware Studios, Dale, this year, who I roped into, um, I was going to say helping me, but he's pretty much doing all the work, um, doing all the um, city oh, oh, crap, that's the wrong order now, isn't it? Um, so that's the big marauder. We'll cover that in a minute here. Maybe. Did you freeze? There we go. Apparently this computer is not uh, well suited for um, streaming. I'll have to work on that. Come on. All right, so let's uh, probably organize those better. So these are some of the shots of uh, uh, Dale Hardware Studios Cityscape um, for the Saturday Alpha Strike game. God, this computer sucks. I wish I would have known that. Yeah, this uh, supposedly i5 with uh, 8 gigs of RAM uh, all in one computer is uh, not good. All right, so here is, I don't know if how much bigger. Oh, now we're going to open 500 times. Oh, nope, that's, there we go. Um, so this is a, a picture of Hardware Studio City that we're doing for the Alpha Strike. It's beautiful. It makes me look like a dirty rank amateur that I'm surprised can even turn a computer on, uh, much less make a 3D printer work. But um, yeah, yeah, Shimmy's in there. That's uh, the next part of what we're talking about at Adepticon. Um, but seriously, look at this. Look at that giant building in the back. Isn't that beautiful? And the cool like prismatic effects. I actually tried one of the buildings um, that I did last year. I got silver adhesive uh, or mirror adhesive um, to try to put on the window so it gave it that like skyscraper mirrored look. Um, but it's adhesive on the, the back and like trying to put it on the back. It was just a pain in the butt. So it looked okay, but 
it doesn't look anywhere as as nice as this so um, is this gonna let me navigate it is all right so here's some more pictures I grabbed from uh, hardware studios some max for scale so you've got more work to do um, I think it looks fine now you could just put a park in the middle and, and be good but uh, he's a perfectionist and we're not scrolling are we scrolling did we freeze no we just don't want to move all right so the other thing we're doing at adepticon this year is big battle tech so at gen con last year um well, i guess i think they had them the year before too um, the giant like 10 inch box set mechs that were uh, 3D printed as as larger mechs. But last year at Gen Con they did mech battles. They were running the, the quick grinder tables or the boot camp using the 10 inch models, which were awesome. Um, and then Ray uh, reached out to me like two weeks before Gen Con, if you're sensing a pattern here, uh, there definitely is one, um, talking to me about maybe doing the uh, Marauder and Warhammer is like the 160 scale. And I, it absolutely um, so he sent me some some files that were um, cut apart to ease in printing and um, I popped these out in like a week I was actually on vacation in Oshkosh um, when we finalized the deal um, God, I wish this would navigate so okay so there's uh, don't talk to me or my son ever again um, so the six millimeter one two sixty five scale and then the one sixty scale uh, Marauder Oh, half of the middle of that city's park. Good call. Um, just a different view. I went with the, um, oh, I can't, the Frank. Uh, he did a lot of the card, collectible card game uh, cards with kind of that silver edge uh, worn uh, look for them. That was what Ray suggested for these guys. So um, it was pretty quick and easy, too, so I was all for it. Uh, most of that is Sharpie or... Vallejo oily steel over a, a mix of uh, gray blacks. Um, yeah, and there's uh, the father of the, the Marauder holding um, the baby Marauder, and that just gives you an idea of you know what a 160 scale mech looks like. You know, it's not quite um, GW scale. GW doesn't really have a scale, but if you were to peg it to a number, it's 140-ish something. Um, so these are a little bit smaller, but uh, still pretty cool. Um, and then I'm actually I actually like the Marauder a little or uh, the Warhammer a little bit more. Um, it's Natasha's, as you can tell. I couldn't get the um, hourglass perfect. I was gonna cut it out on the, the vinyl cutter and do a mask and stuff. I just I just flat ran out of time. The same reason that the hexes aren't really done. Um, I didn't have the the 3D hex files, and I honestly didn't have time to print. Um, Franz Vorwinkel, that's it, thank you. Um, I didn't have time to print um, giant hex spaces, so I just popped those out of the laser cutter. Um, they will be redone at some point, but um, unfortunately the Marauder, the peg from the hips to the center torso, uh, when that uh, part of the file got exploded, whatever, four times, five times, the mesh got kind of screwy and the peg actually broke off so the center torso doesn't sit on the hips right now and that's i don't know if i want to break it apart reprint it or rig it i don't know um that's that's something <laughs> billy yep you were right out of the frame on those um in fact no that's i'm not sure i can't remember who that is there's a uh, goose man greg gullage back there um yeah trying to think and then back to the city was that all the so anyways i'm going to be doing um two lances of 160th max from the the box that we're still um nailing it down unfortunately um we need to, to fix that and get that done um it's probably going to be lance on lance the same lance um just from a design and uh, printing standpoint, I actually have to break these single piece STLs apart um, and make it so they can print nicely 
Um, so you're taking the arms off and that sort of thing. Um, and it's I'm doing the Wolverine now, and that's been about two and a half hours of work, and I'm not done yet. So, um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll work on that and get that done. So, um, and I'm thinking it's going to be sort of light versus. Um, I don't want to do brigade of guards. I don't think I'll have time to do the scheme right, even though it would look fantastic on the those big mechs. Um, either scheme, either the the big red, white, and blue patriotic or the old slash new, um, mostly blue with the white red stripe. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the thing, and I'm trying to think what day that is. I think that's Saturday as well, Saturday afternoon for the giant battle tech map. Um, and then Thursday and Friday will be Hex Total Warfare rules, um, but we're going to be doing um, map scale warship because I like to push the envelope. So last year um, I had the Mech Scale Union, which wasn't the first Mech Scale Union. I know Gel Phoenix has done one for Camo Specs a couple times, and then there was the, um, oh, the lighted one. Burrs Black Cobras that's in one of the rule books that was at Gen Con a few years ago it's um, all wired for electricity um, but I think I am one of the first ones that did a 3D printed uh, mech scale uh, union and uh, that turned out pretty well for Gen Con or um, Adepticon so I decided to push the envelope um, reached out to uh, Stephen Huda who did the Concordant frigate um, which um, just because I know he does all his art as SolidWorks models and then puts them and renders them into a scene and that sort of thing. Um, so I knew that the art was already a 3D model that I could potentially uh, work with. So I don't know why I even tried to do that. Um, so we, we worked out, um, he, he gave me the files graciously enough to, to do this, and um, Dale is, Hardware Studios is helping me um, uh, mech scale it, I guess, um, because the, the 3D model is, is an art piece. It's got a lot of details that would never, never 3D print. Um, so he's kind of uh, reworking it so I can print it out. I mean, it's if you were to print the whole thing out, it'd be five feet long. Um, and I want to, I want to do a full map scale or mech scale, uh, worship, but it's like $500 in material. So, uh, we're going to do a crashed one, um, as, uh, one in, you know, forgotten periphery world somewhere in the Torn Concord. It, um, let me... And the other reason I knew it was a 3D model, so that was a huge part. Um, the other part is it's it's pretty aesthetically unique um, with the warships. I don't know if there's a better picture of it. Let's just that one. Um, so I, I like it because it stands out. It's not kind of the, the boxes of 2750 or the whatever the hell they were smoking for uh, 3057 warships. Um, that actually looks like something that might be able to, to fly in space. So we're going to do um, the front of the hull, maybe part of that gravity deck and the engine and maybe a fin um, on a kind of a desert scheme uh, that people will be. One of the games is... Uh, like an objective raid, you're trying to get uh, no end. And I thank you. Um, yeah, that's right. Huh. Um, like a you know objective raid or tech raid in 3025-ish, and then the next one will be um, 30 Jihad Era um, Federated Sons versus Torn Con Concord. In fact, that's the entire theme of um, our Adepticon games this year is Torn Concord. Um, and Federated Sons, or excuse me, Pirates and um, 
Torrance. So we try to do the, the last year was all new Avalon games. So uh, we try to do that. So um, yeah, so that's, I've got, what do I got? Six, six FDM plastic wire 3D printers. Um, the Frozen Shuffle LCD printer, which is fantastic for $800. Um, it can't be beat uh, unless the screen goes bad. Um, and then you have to fix that. But mine, mine so far has been good. I'm um, way better than the AnyCubic Photon. If you have any interest in 3D printers at all, um, the Form 2 that I use to print these guys on and the rest of them, um, the motherboard blew out. And what's normally a $50 part for an, uh, a normal 3D printer and I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour work, um, is something I have to send back to Boston to Form Labs for $800 um, because how the Form 2 works is uses a laser beam and mirrors to draw out your image in the resin and then the resin hardens when the laser hits it and it builds it up in layers. Um, so attached to the motherboard are the galvanic motors that control the mirrors for the lasers um, so you can't just plop in a new motherboard they have to put a new motherboard in and then recalibrate all the mirrors and do like laser sighting and all that kind of crazy futuristic stuff um, that I know I couldn't possibly do. So um, it's going to happen. I just don't know when. Um, and right now the Frozen's been doing really well. Um, surprisingly well for me. Um, so here is just a quick side to 3D printers. Um, one 2500 scale Nova from Star Trek Voyager that I've already kind of started working on. Um, this is actually a 3DS model that um, I turned into an OBJ file and sized it correctly to 12500. And I mean, I don't know, you can see the, the scale here, or you could if I did this. So there's a Nova, and like it's already got a primer and I'm doing some sanding work to it, so. But that's on an $800 3D printer. Now the bottom's a little, again, you gotta have the support. But I mean, it's really not bad. And same thing, one 2500 scale for the prey. Uh, this, the gun barrels that are supposed to be there actually printed. They were like, I don't know, the thickness of a human hair. Um, I couldn't believe it. I cut them off because, you know, nothing was gonna keep them on for life, but they actually printed. I was impressed. And again, you can kind of see the, the engraved maybe detail on the wings. Maybe not. Um, does that help at all? Okay, there you go. Um, again, this has got a coat of primer on it. So, but yeah, that's, so if you're looking for a, a resin 3D printer that's capable of amazing stuff, um, get the Frozen, buy it from was it 3D Warehouse in um, the U.S. just so you get a warranty on it um, and support. But uh, yeah, it was a it's a great printer. So let's uh, and just we'll go back real quick to uh, so this is Dale's website, Hardware Studios, doing all the terrain. You can see some of his renders. Oh, oh, oh! I almost forgot. Um, I pulled it out for this just on purpose. So here is uh, Hardware Studios, not a leopard, Gepard. Is that what I think you call it, the Gepard? Um, Mech scale dropship. Um, so here, let's. Uh, I think this file was the one. I think you've resized it since then. Um, this was earlier. I think he's made these bigger now. So you can see the, the catapult's going to have a, a problem. I don't know. Maybe you can sidestep out. Cower down. Um, but uh, it's a fantastic model. So if you want some mech scale uh, uh, drop ships, and you have a drop shuttle now too, don't you, Dale? I don't know if he's there. Um, yeah. Um, he has a drop shuttle that could work as a map scale union. He has an actual mech scale uh, 
that under a terrain or units? Ah, well, this is trippy. This is really cool. I haven't seen this, but um, I dig in this three-dimensional like product layout. That's slick as hell. Um, so, not to be an advertisement, but here's some of his six millimeter stuff. Also, his terrain hills, which came out really nice. Um, I have one that I printed like at sixty percent. Um, if you don't have a styrofoam cut or anything else, that's um, that's great. So, okay, under units. So, yeah, there you go. This monitor drop ship, which is the totally not a union. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's get the mouse off of them so they stop dancing. Uh, there's the drop shuttle. All right, so. And honestly, I don't know how he's making any money at $180 for that drop ship. Uh, because my, the one, now granted the union I did was scaled up from map scale, so it was not optimized for printing, but I think that was 85 hours of printing for both halves and then the doors and the legs and all that stuff. Um, but it's also like an inch thick, so that's probably the difference. Uh, and this guy, the Merrimack, which is the Confederate I have on my, my desk as well. Um, I'll save on licensing fees. Oh, you know, I need a second monitor up front so I can see what I'm doing. So there we go. So here's his uh, drop ships and stuff. Um, he also does Star Wars stuff. This is all six millimeter too, right? Yeah. Manta air fighter. So this is cool. So yeah, it's hardwarestudios.co, no M. Um, uh, so let's go to, and then this is the Merrimack or the Confederate. Uh, which I started working on months ago and never got by. The doors on this are a little uh, more situated for mechs. Uh, again, it's terrain. You know, if, I guess if you're crazy, you're not going to like cut it open and light it up and stuff. I don't know. Good enough for me. So if you guys got any... <laughs> we couldn't afford the M. Nice. Um... So I guess we'll go to the webcam. Hey, it's me. So you guys have any other questions? Anything you want to take a look at out of the box again? Anything like that? No? I guess there is a lag. Also, thank you guys for not uh, watching the Super Bowl and come hanging out with me. Uh, my wife didn't think anybody would come, and I said, well, there'd probably be at least two people. Uh, so we couldn't afford to. So well, all right, guys. Well, thanks for sticking with me and looking at the new box set. Uh, if you were watching this later on the uh, you know not live stream, put a comment down there. I'll I'll get it. I'll respond. Um, yeah. Hope you guys have a good night. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hope to see you guys next time.